friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a third year PhD student at Yale University, the CEO of Accepted Consulting and a digital content creator. In today's video, I wanted to talk about my five must have applications for iOS systems for students. As a researcher, an entrepreneur, and an absolute tech junkie, I have tried so many different applications in order to improve my overall productivity, my focus, and to feel like there's some semblance of control over all the things that are going on. And in today's video, I have applications that will help you get off of your phone and stay focused. There are applications for improving your overall systems and managing your inbox and hitting inbox zero. This video is jam packed with so many great recommendations and I really hope that you'll enjoy it and that you'll get something out of it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Our first app of today is GoodNotes. GoodNotes is a note taking application that is available on all OS devices and it uses iCloud in order to make sure that you are able to save your documents across your devices. I personally love this because when I'm taking notes for lectures or I'm preparing lesson plans, I like adding different images or things that are from my computer. So I'll have the document open on my iPad as well as on my main computer in order to add images or to type out different messages if I don't want to just handwrite. GoodNotes has all of these different customizable features that allow you to make your notes as aesthetically pleasing and as useful to you as possible. My favorite feature on GoodNotes is the ability to actually create shapes and I use this for mind mapping. When I'm working on essays or if I'm thinking about a variety of ideas for my dissertation, I have to figure out ways to pull those ideas and see how it is that they connect. And one way of doing this is by mind mapping on GoodNotes. One of my main complaints about GoodNotes back when I first started using it was that it didn't have a recording feature and there were a couple different features that applications like Notability or Notes on Apple or that OneNote had that I didn't really feel like were in GoodNotes. But over the years they have completely transformed the application and it has so many different offerings including the ability to record while you're in a document. If you're a student that is going to lecture and you want to make sure that you don't miss anything you can record in app while also taking your notes as you go. As a PhD student, another thing that I really love about GoodNotes is that it is searchable. So even though I use my own handwriting and I tend to take all my notes by hand in GoodNotes, you can still use the search features in order to find where it is that you took certain notes. And this is incredibly important for me as a PhD student who travels a lot. I travel to the UK, especially for research, to go to the archives and to be able to easily pull up my notes on a particular reading or on a document that I've seen or in my mind map, it is absolutely critical and makes it so that way my workflow is incredibly seamless. There are so many different features to GoodNotes and if you would like a complete video comparing GoodNotes with the other note-taking applications then please let me know in a comment below. But now let's go ahead and chat a little bit about the sponsor of today's video. Which is none other than Paperlike. Ever since I bought my first iPad back in 2019, I have used the Paperlike screen protector in order to use the Apple Pencil effectively on my notepad. I am really picky about pens and note paper. I have tried so many different types of stationery and pens in order to find the right combination for note taking. However, as a PhD student and as somebody who is traveling for research all of the time, I need to have my notes digitally. And the one thing that I had trouble giving up was the feeling of actually writing on a notepad. And with the new iteration of the paper-like screen protector, you have even more of a paper-like feel. This new screen protector features nano dot surface technology, which is intended to improve the overall user experience, but also improve clarity and precision. One of the complaints that I had about the original paper-like screen protector is that it did add a little bit of a matte film to the overall look of the iPad. And when you have an iPad Pro like I do, you want to have the best possible experience with the visuals, especially as somebody who is a creative individual and who uses my iPad in order to create thumbnails or to work on creative projects. With the new screen protector, you have a clear view of your iPad screen. And I think that you will find that your overall experience is greatly improved. And when combined with applications like GoodNotes, Paperlike is just unmatched. If you're looking to purchase your own Paperlike screen protector and you wanna learn a little bit more about their technology, then go ahead and check out the links down below. Thank you so much to Paperlike for sponsoring today's video. And let's go back into it and talk about how you can hit inbox zero. The next application is perhaps one of my favorite for 
hacking productivity. Superhuman is an email application that you can use on any of your macOS devices and is intended to help you reach inbox zero. Through all the different key shortcuts, you are able to easily categorize and archive your emails. And for anybody that needs to keep a paper trail, for example, not wanting to delete an email with an important due date or information from your professors or on a research project that you might be involved in, this is the absolute perfect application. Superhuman archives any emails you do not need immediate access to. You simply press E in your inbox and it goes ahead and selects it as done. If, however, it is an email that you want to be reminded of, they have reminder features. They also have ways that you can categorize your emails, labeling them for all of your different needs. I absolutely love this feature because I have various projects in the works. I am a PhD student as well as a business owner. And I also run a YouTube channel where I have brand deals and other things that I need to go back and forth about with my manager and being able to label different things and have quick access to them is absolutely key. Superhuman is a little bit of a pricier productivity application, but as a student, you get a discount. And I personally think that Superhuman is the best way to level up your workflow and get you to inbox zero. The next application that we're going to talk about is Opal. Opal has been an absolute godsend for my productivity, but also my ability to sleep. You know the drill. You get into bed, you're prepared to go to sleep, you pick up your phone, and next thing you know, it's an hour later and you're still scrolling TikTok. Or another scenario. You sit down at your computer in order to get your work done for the day. You open up your readings, you check Notion, you're making sure that you're getting the right assignments done, and then you pick up your phone, and the next 30 minutes, you are stuck scrolling. I'm sure all of us can relate to this to some degree. And Opal is my solution. I have tried so many different app blockers and ways of controlling my addiction to my phone. But here's the thing. We all think we have self-control and an ability to put down our phones. But this is one addictive device. Even the most disciplined of us don't have the control over our addiction to our phones. Therefore, Opal is the perfect solution because it allows you to actually limit how much time you can spend on an application, but it also allows you to shut down certain apps for a certain amount of time. For example, you're sitting in lecture and your class is just about to start. You're still scrolling on your phone. When your teacher says, okay, it's time to start the lecture, shut down all your applications and focus, you're able to do that for about five, 10 minutes. But how many of you that use your computer or your iPad soon find yourself in your email inbox or on Instagram? Yes, I'm looking at you. I'm calling you out right now. And I'm telling you that Opal is your solution because Opal works on your phone, your iPad, your computer, and it allows you to set limits that actually work. Unlike when you use screen time on your iPhone where there's a time limit and you can keep extending it by 15 minutes, Opal will actually block your access, but it only cuts off access to the apps that you have personally indicated. For example, I have a 12 hour block from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. And that means that the applications such as Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and my email inbox are not accessible on my phone. But that means that I can still get in touch with my friends. I can still get in touch with people in an emergency and worst case scenario, if I still need access, access to my email, I have access to it on my computer. You can set your own limits and you can also indicate what time you want it to shut off as well as if you'd like it to run for a certain amount of time. For example, I will run Opal while I am in class. I will run Opal at night and I will also run Opal for an hour or two while I'm studying, which is what we're going to talk about next. The next application is Zotero. Zotero is a citation management software. And for those of you in high school or college who have never used Zotero or a citation management software before, this is why you should. This free application is your one-stop shop for keeping track of everything that you've read, all of your notes, and also all of your citations. If you've ever received an assignment for an essay where the citation format is entirely foreign to you, then Zotero is going to have you covered. Zotero plugs in to Word as well as into Google Docs and will directly populate the citation for whatever it is that you are reading for you. It will also self-populate your biographies in alphabetical order and with the proper citation format, but that's not all. Zotero also lets you organize your citations and your notes based on projects and also has a system that allows you to highlight in-app. So although I personally prefer to use GoodNotes for my note-taking purposes, Zotero also has the ability for you to highlight and annotate your PDFs in order for you to take notes on articles 
or on any papers that you may have been assigned for class. If you would like a full and complete review as well as a how-to guide for how to use Zotero or a review of other citation management softwares, be sure to leave me a comment down below. But Zotero is the application that you should download right now. It's free because it'll immediately improve your efficiency and productivity as you write papers. And last but not least is a little bit of self-promotion because we're talking about my app, Acceptance Society. Acceptance Society is a community application that I built with my team and we host it on Mighty Networks. This is a community of people inside and outside of academia that are invested in learning and in sharing their knowledge. With this community, we have an online forum where you can discuss your experiences and ask questions, share resources, and also connect with people from around the world. Secondly, our members have access to daily study sessions where Monday through Friday, we host co-working sessions where you can study live with other people. But unlike other study streaming platforms, this is really designed for accountability. When you enter a new study session, you will type into the chat what it is that you're gonna be working on and the community will be there to cheer you on. If you have questions or if you have things that you need help with, you can drop them in the chat as you're studying. We also utilize the Pomodoro method, which has 50 minutes on and 10 minutes off in order to remind you to take breaks when needed. Accepted Society is not just a virtual co-working space, however. Accepted Society is about community building and it's also about helping you achieve your goals and being the absolute best that you possibly can be. And part of that is weekly accountability. Accepted Society offers monthly planning sessions as well as weekly accountability workshops where you meet with other members and discuss your goals as well as set up action steps to ensure that you are achieving them. Goal setting only works insofar as you are making daily changes in order to achieve your goals. And Accepted Society is there to cheer you on and to provide you with the resources so that way you do achieve those goals. I started Accepted Society back during the pandemic when I was lonely. I was in my apartment in New Haven, just starting my PhD, and I really felt isolated. I began hosting these live study sessions every couple of days, and over time it just grew and I developed this community of friends and like-minded people who are all dedicated to research and knowledge and who are there to support one another. So if you are interested in any of the applications discussed in this video, all of the links will be down below. There is a free three-day trial for both the standard and the exclusive memberships at Accepted Society. I hope to see you there soon. All right, we've reached the end of the video. I hope that you found it useful and that there is at least one application in this video that you're interested in checking out. Thank you so much to Paperlike for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in checking out Paperlike for yourself, check out the links down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for future academic productivity and entrepreneurship content. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.